Those monsters won't be tinkling in your water supply anymore. Wonderful. Thank you for your help. And that's how it's done. What where that came from, too. Lots of people with problems out there. And gall to make them go away. You're a real pro at this, Alvin. Hey! Hmm. No fever. How are you feeling? I don't seem to have any strength. Um, have you been eating properly? I've never eaten. Ever? Through Sylph, I drew life from the air. With Undine's power, I received sustenance from the water. What's she talking about? I guess the spirits gave her all the energy she needed. Well, now you're gonna have to nourish yourself the old-fashioned way. I see. So this is what you call hunger. <laughs> Fascinating. So, should we rest at the inn? Now that you mention it, I could use some grub myself. Welcome. Three rooms, please. But before that, can we get something to eat? Oh, my apologies, but our cook isn't in yet. Hey, is she okay? Can we at least use your kitchen? Yes, please. Help yourself. Your friend looks like she's about to pass out. My stomach, it really is growling. <laughs> and here I thought that was just a silly human expression. Not bad. Not bad. It's good. I quite enjoy ingesting calories with you. Humans should learn to cherish these simple pleasures. Good morning, Alvin. Sorry you had to carry me up there. Don't worry about it. Just part of the job. Oh? <laughs> so now what are you gonna do? Well... Good morning. Good day, Jude. I was just about to share my plans with Alvin. What is it? I'm thinking of returning to Nia Kara. Is that your hometown? More accurately, it's where my shrine is. If I go back, I might be able to re-summon the four. So, she really is Maxwell. This is where you come in, Jude. Will you accompany me to Nia Kara? What? It's true that you brought your current situation upon yourself, but I bear some of the blame as well. I'll put in a good word for you with the people of Nia Kara. I'm sure they'll look after you. Wow, you've put a lot of thought into this. Yes. Remember when you told me I seemed unconcerned? I decided to take that to heart. Mila, you don't need to practice your swordplay anymore? No need to concern yourself with my martial abilities. Well, if nothing else, you know how to swing the pointy end. Okay, I'll come with you. Good. You needn't worry. A little more practice wouldn't hurt, though. You think so? Better safe than sorry. Come find me once you're ready to go. Wait, you're coming with us, Alvin? Why not? I've come this far. Hey, Mila? Hmm? 
Thanks. Ready to hit the road? Mila, you said it's north of here? How far? Less than half a day's flight time. If we could fly using Sylph's power. Oh, well, I'm afraid my wings are, you know, non-existent. I hope we can find a place to rest along the way. The map showed a village in that direction, so we should be okay. Either way, we can't just stay here. We must press forward. I know, I know. That was quite a sigh. So seriously, you guys are spying for Arjul, right? What? Of course not. I've never heard of the Military Powers Act being used against anyone other than Arjul's spies. You're thinking too much into this. Why are you so concerned about this? Unless you're spying for Rashagol. No, no. I was just thinking that if you were spying for Arjul, maybe you could use your connections to score me some high-paying intelligence work. Sorry to disappoint you. But I assure you, I will pay your fee. You just have to wait a little bit longer. Fair enough. But even with your special friend discount, the interest is piling up. Is Milo really that Maxwell? She does act a bit nutty, but she looks normal enough. I think it's true. When I first met her, Mila had the four great spirits with her. What? Get out of here. No, seriously. Fire spirit Efreet, water spirit Undine, wind spirit Sylph, and earth spirit Gnome. It was the first time I'd ever seen them in person, but there was no mistaking who they were. That's a mighty exclusive club. Can't imagine they hang out with a lot of mortal girls. Yeah. You have big hands. Interesting. No wonder you pack quite a punch. I, um, thanks. Excellent. Here we go again. <laughs> Far too easy. That wasn't too bad. Oops, gotta straighten my scarf. You sure do love that thing. Don't you? It's one of Fismage's finest, custom made for yours truly. I don't know much about brands, but it does look good on you. You gotta be careful about what you wear, kid. It's how the world judges a man. I'd rather think what's inside is what counts. Yeah, and this is how what's inside gets projected to the outside. You don't believe some people shape what's outside in order to conceal the ugliness within? <laughs> well, if you can't see through a false front, isn't that your problem? So you blame the victims for being deceived. If that's really what you believe, Alvin, it tells me all I need to know about what's within. Man, <laughs> I sure slipped up this time, huh? Walking sure is grueling. That's unexpected coming from you. I'm just used to having Sylph fly me everywhere. 
The only time I ever really walked was when I used Undine to travel across water. I see. Maybe this is your punishment for treating the four great spirits like your personal servants? Servants? They may help out now and then, but they're the ones who pester me. They're like a bunch of bickering in-laws that never go home. Did you just call the four bickering in-laws? Compared to Fenmont's night climb, the sky in Ajul sure is bright. That's true. The spirit climbs here are much more stable. What are you talking about? What do you intend to climb? C-L-I-M-E. Surely the great Lady Maxwell knows all about the subject? Don't flatter yourself by assuming I recognize every arbitrary word you humans create. Human arrogance can be so trying. Mila, do you know what Riza Maxia is made of? As if I wouldn't know? The power of spirits composes the entire natural world. Right. The term spirit climb refers to the balance of spirit power. When that power is out of balance, nature can become polarized in one direction. That's why there are unusual spirit climbs, like the perpetual night of Fenmont. I see. Thank you. Now I understand. You're very good at explaining things. My pleasure. Oh, I see how it is. I guess I'm just an arrogant human compared to little old innocent Jude. Wow, that's an impressive amount of fruit. <laughs> I'm catching a whiff of cider. Oh, they must have orchards here. Well, well, well. We don't get many visitors here. Do you live here, ma'am? I would hope so. I'm the mayor. Is this the right road to Niakara? Niakara? Now that's a name I haven't heard in ages. What do you mean? It's what people called a long-forgotten village. I don't even know if it still exists. I heard tales of the village as a child. People claimed it lies beyond the Kijara Sea Falls. Where can we find it? You need to cross some seriously rugged terrain to get there. It won't be an easy journey. In that case, we should probably rest here before heading on. Agreed. I'm afraid our little village doesn't have an inn. Not much call for one. But I've an extra room in my house. You're welcome to use it if you like. Thank you for your hospitality, ma'am. So, why bother taking human form at all? Spirits are really just masses of mana. They can't interact with the temporal world in that state. For a spirit to take physical form, it needs a catalyst of a corresponding element. As an example, the fire spirit of Freak can take form as a blazing inferno. And as Maxwell, you can be any element, right? The human body contains all four elements, so it's the perfect catalyst for me to take a physical form. What would happen if you lost your catalyst? I would gather elements to make a new one, but I'd have to wait for it to grow up. Grow up? You mean you start as a baby? It's time consuming, but if you want to use a human form as a catalyst, you have to wait for the body to develop. So even the Lord of Spirits isn't omnipotent? Not in this human realm, anyway. Let's just be grateful she didn't go with the male model, eh? Wouldn't bother me. Oh, you swing both ways? That's not what I meant.
What are you looking at? Nothing. Get lost. Wrong answer, Squirt. Now we really want to know what you're looking at. It's some sort of shiny object. It's my shiny object. Finders keepers. Hmm. Looks like a puzzle. A difficult one at that. How about this? Whoa, what's happening? This looks like our letters, but different. More like ancient writing. Let's see here. Heed my words, for I am Eifried, the intrepid explorer who has crossed the world's edge without fear. Yada yada yada, more self-promotion. Ah, here we go. At last, I have reached Terra Incognita. But alas, I am unable to return home. I shall take my many treasures, seal them in arcs, and scatter them about this land. It is my hope that they shall serve as beacons to those explorers who follow in my footsteps. I'm impressed, Alvin. But I still don't know what it means. I've heard of this Eifried. He's a legendary pirate. He raided cities all throughout Rize Maxia ages ago. He set off to find the end of the world and never returned. Or so the legend goes. Nice of him to put his treasures in these boxes for us. The pirate Eifried's treasures? Oh, oh, I want to find him too! Maybe you should learn to read first, young man. Yeah, good idea. You'll all wait for me, right? And keep this Eifried treasure stuff between us. Morning. What are you up to? Watching people. Okay. Say, Mila, can I ask you something? Hmm? What's a Spyrex? Why were you trying to destroy that device in Fenmont? Spyrex technology is something humans were never meant to have. So, I must take it away from them. Why? That is none of your concern. So you don't trust me? That's not it. Look, if you saw a toddler playing with a knife, what would you do? I'd probably snatch it away. And what would be your reason? Because it's dangerous. The baby doesn't know how to use a knife. He could cut himself, or worse. There's your answer. What? But we're not babies. If we understand what we're dealing with, and if we see the dangers, we can learn how to use it safely. So you say. But to me, you're no different than infants. I will do what I must to protect this world. If that means destroying the Lens of Kresnik, so be it. It's my mission. I see. Don't worry, Jude. None of this will concern you once we reach Nia Kara. What's going on? It would seem we can't linger around here anymore. So they did follow us. I don't know, kid. They found us awfully fast considering this isn't their home turf. Well, it's not like we can ask them about it. Let's go before they find us. There's an exit in the western part of town. That must be the way to the Kajara Seafalls. <laughs> 